guys. I hope you're having a great day. In this How Today's episode, we're gonna talk about how you can recreate these cool before and after effects with a color palette using Premiere Pro only. And now let's get straight to it. The first thing you want to do is create two folders just to keep things organized. One called Photos and the other one called Layers. In the Photos folder, you'll need three versions of the same photo. One straight out of camera, the other one black and white, and the last one which will be the final edit. Then you want to go to Layers and then New Item and then go to Color Mate. Here you want to choose 500 by 500 as dimensions because we want it to be a square, press OK. The color right now we'll leave it at black and then we're gonna name them square one to six. So just control C to copy it, control V to paste. So we have two, three, four, five, six squares. And then we change the names accordingly. We, on, we want to also add the seventh color mate and that's one, it's going to have the dimensions 300 by 50 and that's gonna be for the text background and we're gonna call that text background. Now all the layers are done, the photos are here, so all we need is to start with a project. A few things about when creating the sequence is that the frame rates will be at 23.976 frames per second and the resolution should be 1080 by 1920 as that's perfect for Instagram Reels. Otherwise, if our sequences don't match, then all the instructions that I'm about to give you will not work. Now what you need to do is add tracks because we're gonna need a lot of layers for this project. You can do that by just right clicking here, add tracks and then write the number of tracks that you want to add. I have 14 already. The first layers that we want to add are our three photos. We want to start with our fully edited photo as our first layer on the first track. And on top of that, we'll put the black and white. And on top of that, we'll put the straight out of camera photo. Another thing we need to do is adjust the length of these clips and it should be exactly 7 seconds 12 frames. So just put the playhead there and make sure to drag all the photos to the playhead. Now let's make sure that they fit perfectly on our frame here. So I'm gonna scale mine down a little bit. The next thing we want to create is the transition between the layers. So we will do that on the first second mark exactly. So just move the play playhead to one second. If you're having difficulties moving left or right, then just know that if you go over your video and scroll your mouse up or down, you move one frame per each scroll. Hold shift on your keyboard to make these video tracks a bit larger up to the point where you can see the node here for the keyframes. Click on the first one and add the keyframe onto the one second mark. Then you want to go to one second 10 frames and then add a second keyframe and then drag it down to zero. And that's how we've created our first transition. There. Now we want to do the same thing with the second layer. You can move up and down by the way by holding control here on your keyboard and then scrolling up and down. So we want to go to four seconds and five frames, add a keyframe on the second with the second layer selected, then go to four seconds 20 frames and add another keyframe. Then drag the second keyframe down and now we have completed both transitions. And now that we are done with our photos, we need to continue with the other layers, which are the squares. So first of all, let's pick a color for the squares. I would put the playhead on top of the fully edited photo here so that that shows in uh, our screen and then double click on the square. Then click on the eyedropper tool and select one of the six colors from the photo. My first one is gonna be this uh, dark yellow of the jacket. Clicking that OK, then I'll go to second square, do the same thing, double click, pick a second color. I'm going with this dark one here. Then the third square, I'll go with the red and the last square, I'll just pick the color of the wall. Now let's put all the squares on top of each other, starting with the square number one and then we go with the square number two. Make sure when you add the squares, also drag them for the entire length of the clip. Now we all have to cut all of these layers from square one to square six at the five second, five frames mark. So let's go there, five seconds, five frames. Press C on the keyboard and then cut all of them. And delete the right part. Now at the front, they're not all the same. So we'll start with square number one and we'll go to one second, one frame for this one and then cut it there and delete it. 
second square at one second, three frames, and so on. I'll put the numbers on screen so you can pause the video and do that yourself. And now we have the duration of all of our squares. The next step will be to animate these squares and we'll have to do that manually one by one. So I'm going to show you the first square, how I do that, and then I'll put all the numbers that you need to change for all the other layers. And then you can do that on your own. For this square, we're going to have to put the playhead on one second and one frame again. With this layer selected, we're going to, we're going to effects control and we're going to toggle animation for position and scale. And that's going to create two keyframes. Then make sure that these three numbers are exactly as follows. You want the scale to be 6 and you want the position to be 283 by 960. Now let's move ahead to 1 second and 12 frames with the square 1 layer selected. Let's disable all, all of the rest so that it doesn't, so that they don't stand on the way. With the square 1 selected and then we're going to have to change this number, the scale to 21 and the position to 280 by 960. Now let's go ahead to 1 second 23 frames. Here we only want to add a keyframe for scale without changing any of the numbers. Let's go ahead to 2 seconds and 6 frames and bring the scale down to 12. Now with the same layer selected, let's go to 2 seconds and 11 frames, add the keyframe for position without changing any of the numbers. Now we want to move to 3 seconds and 13 frames. Here we have to make sure to add the keyframe for position and then we have to change the direction according to the place where this color will be on our photo. So if you want to know that exactly, we'll also have to disable these two layers and only leave the first layer of the photos visible. So right now we only have the first square visible and the first layer, the fully edited layer. And now we see that the, the square is here and it needs to go somewhere in this yellow jacket. So I'm going to adjust accordingly. I'll leave it there. Once we're done with that, we go to 3 seconds and 20 frames and add a keyframe for scale without changing the number. Then we go to 4 seconds and 1 frame, add another keyframe for scale and change the number, bring it down to 7. Go to 4 seconds and 7 frames and then toggle animation for opacity, but leave it at 100. Then go to 4 seconds and 12 frames and bring the opacity down to 0. Now that we are done, let's see how this animation looks for this one square. That's perfect. It became a bit dark here because I recorded the video before, but when I was looking at it at the screen recording, when I was going to edit it, I noticed that I noticed that my mouse wasn't exactly where I was pointing it. It was slightly off, so you couldn't really see exactly what I was doing. So I had to record it again and now it's dark. So that's why this is. But anyways, now comes the tiring part where you will have to do this exact same thing for the rest of the five layers. I will just put the numbers of the, on the screen and then you can just follow the instructions. And then I'll see you when you're done and we'll continue with the rest of the edit. And that was pretty much it with these color palettes. We have made all the transformation and it looks like this, which is pretty nice. I'm very happy with it. The only parts missing will be the text, the text background and the music, the sound. And, and we'll try to go over that as fast as possible right now. So let's go to our layers here. We have the text background. So we're gonna add that over our six layer, six square. By clicking on it, go to effects control and bring the opacity down to 88%. Then go to the Effects tab, which you can access by pressing Shift and 7 on your keyboard. Search for Crop. And we're gonna drag this effect onto our text background. Then go to the 4 seconds and 15 frames mark on the timeline. And add a cut. Select the first part of the text, go to Effects Control and set the scale to 163 and set the position to 535 by 568. Now scroll down to the crop function and here on the left we're going to bring it up to 14% and 
and on the right we're going to bring it up to 16 percent now select the second part of the text background the scale will be 152 the position will be 535 by 568 scroll down again to crop and on the left bring it up to 15 and on the right to 23 percent now our text has the back has a background in order to add a text layer just go to the beginning of the timeline press ctrl t on your keyboard and then stretch it over the entire length of the clip select this text layer and then go to effects control and here somewhere under graphics you should see the text open the drop down menu and let's change the font to Verdana. Though of course you can make this as you want yourself. But anyways, I'm gonna show you the way I did it. Bring the space between letters up to 483. Select bold. Set the color to white if, that's not, if it's not there already. And then go down to transform and if it's not opened, click this arrow here on the side. But before we move it, let's change the text very fast to before and now let's move it so that it is inside of the server need to make it smaller a little bit more now let's do the same cut on the text as it was on the background here then go to the second part of it and then change the text from before to after now let's go by selecting this layer to effects control on text which says after and let's go down to transform and try to make it fit with the background again just move it a bit to the right now let's make a cut at 4 seconds and 14 frames and delete the part that is in between that's going to help to sell out the glitch effect that it's going to be also part of the sound then let's go to 4 seconds 12 frames, make another cut here and then go to 10 seconds and 4 seconds 10 frames and make another cut there and delete the part in between. Now the text is also done so let's play this back again. And it's finished. What you can do is perhaps also add some movement to the photos. I would, for example, go to the very beginning of the first photo and then set the scale to where it is, just toggle animation and then go to where, and then go to the point where it changes to the second layer and then just add this by maybe a few numbers and do the same with the, set, with the other layers and then you have some movement and that makes the whole thing a bit more interesting, in my opinion. When it comes to the sound that you can use, I'll put a link down below in the description and it would lead you to my Instagram reel in this version. And maybe you can download that video and extract the sound from that and put it in here underneath. It also has that glitch effect sound if you don't have one yourself. And then when you upload it on Instagram, you choose the Hans team, uh, uh, the, what is it called? Fields, Chase, something like that. The very famous, uh, soundtrack from interstellar you'll find it there in the link below and when you add that sound from reels you can pull the volume almost all the way down and and increase the volume that you have on the original video and then when you upload it you have the benefit of having the sound uh hans Zimmer there which will help your clip reach more viewers but then you also have the benefit of having my glitch included in the sound I hope it could help you right now also and I hope it worked with your photo. If it did then make sure to give a thumbs up to the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see this kind of videos in the future and if you have any questions or things like that just comment down below and me or the community will help you get over your issues. And now I'll see you on the next one. Peace!